Welcome to Breakthrough. Today we're going to be talking about nanoscope technology and the next generation in minimally invasive operative arthroscopy. We have with us in the studio Dr. Matt Daggett from Kansas City, Missouri, Dr. Sanj Kakar from Rochester, Minnesota, and Dr. Brian Gilmer from Mammoth, California. Gentlemen, thank you for joining us to discuss this exciting new technology. Thank you. So Sanj, let's start with you, since you're one of the first surgeons to use the nanoscope in the operating room environment. So what is the nanoscope system? You know, Chris, uh, August 1st, 2019 was a great day. We'd been using the uh, nanoscope in the lab, but we had the privilege of using it in the operating room. And essentially, it's a chip on a stick technology. It's a 14 gauge needle that you can put into the joint and have an unparalleled view around looking at the anatomy. And the beauty is that it's flexible, so it gets us into spaces that we've never been before. That's great. So Matt, how does the nanoscope system differ from previous needle scopes? Yeah, first and foremost, the picture quality is just spectacular. It's significantly better than what's previously been available. Um, also, the instrumentation, it being separate from the actual camera, so you can control the trocar and cannula. Really better localized where you want to put the camera. It really helps out a lot. Um, it's less than, you know, two and a half millimeters in size in general, and it's just such a difference in the ability not just to diagnose, but having instrumentation created to be able to treat things is really exciting. So Matt, what procedures have you performed with the patient awake using local anesthetic, and is there apprehension from the patient? Yeah, for me, uh, it started out with meniscectomies. I'm a knee and shoulder surgeon, so I started out with simple meniscectomies and chondroplasties of the knee, and it quickly expanded as I identified the patient experience was totally different in a positive way. Uh, we expanded the excision of ACL cysts to meniscal repairs to even using interscaling block and local medication to just perform rotator cuff repair and biceps tenodesis all through the nanoscope systems. That has been a uh, really revolutionary thing for me is the patient experience is completely different. At first, you know, when you start, first start getting out, the apprehension is there, but as you educate patients on what to expect and you feel more comfortable as a surgeon, the patient experience is completely different. So gentlemen, any other tips or pearls? Uh, you know, Chris, what, one of the things I found early on that can really help put the patient at disease is starting with a 25 gauge needle, using some half percent marcaine with epinephrine, cuts down on the skin bleeding, and putting a wheel really far all the way around medially and laterally, because sometimes we need to make those far peripheral portals to get better visualization, and that really helps so that the patient doesn't suddenly feel something when we go to make one of those peripheral portals because you only numb them up in kind of those traditional portal sites. Yeah, I think for me, uh, the aha moment was the uh, quality of the scar. Uh, now we don't actually use stitches to close the portals. We just use steri strips. Patients don't like stitches taken out. And when they come into your office and take the steri strips off, you can hardly see where you've made the incision. Yeah, I think one thing to add in is it's appropriate to in, do patient-appropriate anesthesia. You know, most patients really prefer local anesthesia, but some patients will require a little additional sedation in some cases. That's great. So, uh, Brian, Matt discussed apprehension with patients, but what about apprehension with hospital administrators, especially when it comes to reimbursement? When we started evaluating nanoscope technology, and, and I really said, I want to commit to this is something that I want to do, I went to the CFO and the OR manager, and I said, this is the technology. I want to integrate it over about 10 to 15 cases. Let's start with people who are already scheduled for a standard knee arthroscopy, and then let's gradually move and see how far we can get. Uh, if we can come out of the operating room into a procedure room or utilize some of these other spaces that are currently not being used. And you guys bring me the financial and the billing data, I'll bring you the clinical outcomes, and we'll find out how this works best for us in our specific situation and our facility. So Brian, when, when you've been using Nanoscope, did you initially start in the operating room? and then phase it in other areas? We did, so we, we wanted a, I wanted a patient for my comfort who was uh, asleep, anesthetized, and I informed the patient beforehand, you know, we're gonna do your standard procedure, the only thing that's gonna be different is I'm gonna use this smaller camera that we think is gonna give you, you know, less scarring, faster recovery. Um, one of the unexpected benefits was how much less fluid and uh, swelling, therefore, we created. Um, and then gradually we progressed from there. Um, but that really helped me establish the learning curve for myself. And then I think I was able to later transmit that confidence to the patients. So Brian, what about the patient journey and the integration of the hospital system? We already have uh, Synergy Towers and the Synergy Console in place, so it's very easy to just uh, plug and play. We can take the tablet, we connect it just via an HDMI cable, and that can actually uh, transmit it up to the larger monitors that makes it more like standard arthroscopy. And then we can similarly take the pictures and the patient reports, create those in Surgeon Vault, and send them to the patients, which I think is another important part of the patient experience. 
Now, Matt, are you having a similar experience in Missouri? Yeah, very much. Uh, I think site of service is really an important thing and looking at value-based care and the direct and indirect costs associated with care, I believe are gonna be significantly less as we utilize in nanoarthroscopy more and more. Uh, we think a lot about the direct costs of traditional arthroscopy versus nanoarthroscopy or nanoarthroscopy compared to MRI, but we don't think a lot about the indirect costs associated with care, quicker recovery, less anesthesia, less PACU time, all these things are going to be significantly impactful to our society. I would just add that sometimes those things are slightly more difficult to, to measure. And so if you're talking to your administrators and things like that, you want to, you want to kind of take those things into account as well. Um, because in a line-to-line in -line comparison, you may say, well, this doesn't make sense. But, but people don't immediately think about those indirect costs like you're saying. And I think Chris has a critical point that Matt and Brian make in, in 2020 moving forward. I think it's on us to deliver value. And, and the nanoscope gives you better outcomes in terms of less scarring, uh, uh, better functional activities, but the direct and indirect costs, which is something we don't talk about, I think we need to talk about. Uh, and so that's how the nanoscope really attacks the value equation. And it's what we should be doing as physicians for our patients. And we have to advocate for our patients. Mm -hmm. For sure. So Sanj, we've all trained on 30 and 70 degree scopes. Now, the nanoscope system's unique in that it's zero degrees. Did you have a learning curve? Yeah, I think the learning curve for me was actually pretty short. I was a little bit apprehensive at first, but uh, one of the, the, the wonders of Arthrex is the lab. And it got me into the lab very quickly. And within five minutes, I didn't actually know I was using the nanoscope. It felt like I'd been using this for years. Uh, but sometimes you can't come to the lab. And, and so, Chris, you had years of medical education. I know that the Arthrobox is the tool that you've been using with a zero degree lens. Can you tell us how surgeons have adopted to that? Yeah, that's a great point with the Arthrobox. So we've been using the Arthrobox for years. And, and like you said, it's a zero degree lens. And what's really interesting is that when we're training surgeons, we were concerned initially that there would be this great learning curve, but they picked it up very quickly. And what we found is, just like when we were learning in residency, going from a 30 to a 70 degree is very difficult. But when you go from a 30 to a zero, it's really intuitive. What about you guys? Did you guys have a similar experience? I've definitely found that as well, Chris, that basically a need to have a more inline approach, especially with a smaller camera. You can't really make these big movements across the synovium. You need to kind of have a targeted sense of where exactly you're going to approach from and work more of a, in a straight line approach. Um, and then that's been really effective and the learning curve was quite short for me. I didn't have a lot of time picking up. Yeah, I would add in the expanded field of view that nanoscope offers allows us to see more without necessarily adding the 30 degree mm -hmm. scope into the equation. Um, for me, it's really been changing necessarily how I do procedures. So for example, meniscectomies, instead of doing a uh, portal on the lateral side and medial side, I stay in the single compartment for where I think the pathology is. That allows me to e more easily take care of the meniscus tear by having two medial portals as compared to one medial and one lateral. I found the exact same thing independently. There's a lot of convergent evolution here. Once you get it in your hand, you start to realize, we all start to realize the same thing about how it works slightly differently, and you do need to adjust your technique for that. Yeah. And I, th I think we don't need to use traditional portals, as you mentioned. Yeah. Now with the, the needle system that the nanoscope has, you just put the needle in, and where you're happy where you're at, you make your portal there, and you're, you're ready to go. Yeah. And I think that field of view is key when you see, and you're seeing so much more than you used to be able to see. I don't think you have to move it as much as well. Would agree. So Brian, being located in a ski town, your patient population is very active. How have your patients responded to nanoarthroscopy and are they seeking out these treatments? Well, Chris, my patients have really high expectations. I mean, some of them, um, they're not really weekend warriors, they're just warriors. And uh, they charge hard and they pass those high expectations on to me. And so my very first patient uh, was a female climber. She had a chronic medial meniscus tear. And I said, well, why don't we just try this, see how far we get with it. And we did the entire procedure. Uh, I gave her a pain and activity chart. I said, bring this back to me at two weeks. Let's just see how you're doing. She came back post-operative day four. She went on a four mile hike. Then she left town for a week and went climbing in Idaho, came back. And on the day of her two week visit, she had taken a 30 mile bike ride before she came to the clinic. So while traditionally our results from arthroscopic recoveries have been really good, these nanoscopic patients are setting the bar. And in our little uh, mountain community, a lot of people are coming in and saying, hey, I want, I want that nano surgery. I want that nano arthroscopy. There must be something in the water. Yeah, and I would totally agree the patient experience is completely different in the short term. Your first two weeks after surgery is an entirely new experience from the minute you leave the operating room to within seven to 10 minutes being able to walk to your car 
a completely different experience. Now, Matt, you've been part of several local news stories and have a lot of social media posts. Has this helped patients uh, learn about nanoarthroscopy in your community? Yeah, it, it, anything new is obviously something that people are going to want to learn more and more about, and especially when it changes the patient experience so greatly. And uh, I think the education of not just the patients and consumers, but also physical therapists, athletic trainers, primary care providers, of the exposure of this technology, it's really been kind of like, I can't believe we can do this. You know, like as a society, we have the technology to basically do surgery through needles in an incisionless way. Pretty crazy. And uh, those uh, experiences of patients are really what drives, in my experience, further demand from the consumers. Because while patients usually have good outcomes, the patient experience with needle arthroscopy under local while you can just wake up to your point and just walk out to the car with a couple band-aids is a completely different experience that drives more patients to your practice. That's great. Now, Sanj, are you seeing patients requesting procedures using the nanoscope system? You know, Chris, we, we did a, a video on just wrist arthroscopy. And as uh, Matt alluded to, um, it's amazing what patients will see and what they will ask for. They, they, they come into the office saying, you know, I want to try that smaller scope. Um, can you tell me about it? Show me cases that you've done. And uh, it's just showing them what benefits we can do that traditionally we've struggled with. Now, gentlemen, we're all familiar with the proven benefits and research regarding needle scopes versus MRI. Brian, do you believe the nanoscope visualization system can be more conclusive versus traditional MR imaging? I think this is a really nuanced point, Chris. I, I think for me, there are some cases where uh, I like to have the MRI. I like to be able to look at the anterior lateral capsule or the posterior lateral corner in the setting of an acute ACL injury. Uh, but that being said, I think there's times when the nanoscope is clearly superior. Any time where we're doing a, a so-called second look arthroscopy, maybe someone who's had a meniscal repair before, a tibial plateau fracture, they're still having lateral sided pain, those things can be really difficult to evaluate. Um, cartilage lesions, where we're trying to size cartilage defects, um, not only having appropriate sizing helps get those paid for by the payers and, and approved, but they are also critically important for selecting the right procedure. Um, perhaps more importantly, is this, is this an OATS patient? Uh, is this a, a, an osteochondral allograft patient, for example? Um, and so finally, I think there's a kind of a third class of patients where maybe both technologies are appropriate, but the patient may just prefer a nanoscope either for timing reasons um, or logistical reasons, or they have claustrophobia or a contraindication to an MRI. Yeah, for me, it's been an evolution over the period of it, the time of release of the product. And nanoscope for me has become really a primary diagnostic tool that I utilize in the practice. And I think over time, MRI and ultrasound will become more adjunct to the primary diagnostic tool of needle arthroscopy. Yeah, I think for me, uh, Chris, just like Brian alluded to, soft tissue pathology, you know, for me, it's a history and physical exam. It used to be getting an MRI, but we know that the MRI is not very sensitive in looking at certain soft tissue pathology. So if I'm clinically suspicious, I've had patients where the MRI has been negative. I put the nanoscope in, there's a huge tear. And I'm like, how did the MRI not pick this up where the nanoscope picks it up within 10 seconds? So for me, it's really become part of my armamentarium for when I see these patients. Those are great points. So Matt, you're familiar with our mission of helping surgeons treat their patients better. Do you believe the nanoscope technology has the potential to revolutionize arthroscopy? 100%. Uh, it is the most transformative thing I've seen in medicine. I think it's the most transformative piece of uh, innovation that we've had in the last 30 years in orthopedics. And although we're doing a lot of these things, even in a short time period of its release, imagine what the next few years are gonna bring. I personally believe while now we're focused on outcomes, patient experience is really gonna be the next thing we're focused on, not just getting great outcomes, but how can we make it better for the patients, reducing risk, complications, et cetera. I think the patient experience is forever changed. Mm -hmm. Now, Sanj, you've seen the impact of the internal brace ligament augmentation construct on return to work and return to play. Do you believe the nanoscope technology will also help? So I'll give you an example in my practice. You know, I, uh, for me, I, I use acronyms. My acronym is FIRST. That's how I look at nanoscope. So I, I think of it used for fractures and fusions, where we're traditionally making big incisions. Now we're doing it minimally invasively for injections. Traditionally, injections were done under blind or ultrasound. Now you can do it in the office there and then. I look at for reconstructions, TFCC scapholunate reconstructions. Also, small joint arthroscopy. We talked about the flexibility. Now I can get into areas like the DIEJ and the thumb and even the knuckle joints without fear of injuring the cartilage. And then the, the, the last thing I think of it is anything with the word tunnel, carpal tunnel, cubital tunnel, radial tunnel. 
to decompress structures where you used to have big incisions. Now, under direct visualizations, you're more exact what you need to release in terms of pathology. So for me, it's been a game changer. So Matt, along these lines, we all know about the opioid epidemic in this country. Do you feel this technology has reduced the number of narcotic prescriptions in your practice? Definitively. Um, when we compare our traditional arthroscopy for the same procedure, when we use needle arthroscopy, the narcotic requirement is none, meaning we have not written one narcotic wow. for needle arthroscopy patients. And we've had the same experience uh, as patients walking out and requiring uh, zero opioids. Which is, which is huge. In 2020, we all know about the narcotic crisis. So to, to be able to do a procedure as safely, but without that complication. Well, and you talked about being on the precipice. I, you know, we've been working really hard at our place to do opioid-free surgery, right? Mm -hmm. our, our kind of the holy grail for us is opioid-free ACL. We've never quite been able to get there with any combination of block, multimodal analgesia. Sometimes those oral medications, the patient's saying, do you really want me to take six of these giant pills before I you know, go back here? I haven't eaten since last night. And I think the nanoscope is the, is the key part that can help push us over that edge to get to patients where they can genuinely be opioid free. Gentlemen, let's shift gears a little bit here. Sanj, do you see this technology making an impact outside of just doing arthroscopic procedures? Absolutely. Uh, I mean, we, we, we're all lovers of arthroscopy, uh, but we do a lot of open procedures. And so now, for example, I think of decompressions, nerve decompressions. I think of trigger finger, de Quervain's tenosynovitis, anywhere where you had to make an incision. Now you can see through as minimal incision, and then you just release. Uh, you know, I had, a, I had a patient for uh, exercise compartment syndrome. Now, as we know, that's a big fasciotomy incision, but this was done through small incisions. And then there's other procedures that we do which are relatively blind, like needle laparotomy, where we're cutting cords in the palm with a needle. Now there's a lot of stuff down there, Chris. And so now putting a needle with a camera so you can actually see, it changes many things that we do. Yeah, and I think Sanja's point about injections is a good one. It's used in biologics, for example. I had a patient who had a meniscal repair done. He wanted to augment it with PRP mm. after uh, surgery, and so we used the nanoscope not just to look at the meniscal repair, but mm. to direct the placement of our PRP in the appropriate position. Makes sense, for sure. And what about other physicians? Have you heard of other physicians using the nanoscope, or do you think that uh, it has applications? For instance, the trauma surgeons, looking at you know, a tibial plateau fracture to make sure everything's reduced. What about other, are there any other physicians that could ben potentially benefit from this, or have you seen this? Well, I do a fair bit of trauma, uh, being ski hill trauma and that type of thing, and I've talked to some of my trauma colleagues about that. I think for them, having a zero degree camera is a little bit more intuitive. Maybe it kind of lowers the threshold for their fears of, our, of you know, approaching things arthroscopically. And then also, um, you know, we excised a benign tumor using uh, adjuvant, uh, uh, freezing the tumor, and then actually putting the nanoscope inside to look at the tumor cavity. Did that, did that adjuvant treatment cover the entire cyst wall to decrease the recurrence. So I think there's a lot of opportunity there um, in the future. So gentlemen, let's finish this episode with uh, final thoughts, starting with you, Matt. Yeah, for me, this, like I said, I think the simplest word I could say is transformative. Uh, I think it's not every day in our life that we get to see a revolution in a field of medicine, for example, that will completely change not just our outcomes, but as I said, our patient experience. And for me, Nanoscope is that. Yeah, I think uh, Matt used the word transformative. For me, the word is value. Uh, I, th I firmly believe in value of, of better outcomes at better cost and cheaper cost, both direct and indirect. And so for me, it's about value. Finally, for me, I just think that the experience for me of watching a patient walk out with Band-Aids on their knee, with no prescription, and going and telling their friends, uh, that really adds a lot to the rewarding feeling of my practice and, and of just... Uh, of being happy when I go home at the end of the day. And those people uh, tend to tell their friends. Yeah, and it's amazing to see patients who you're doing it for diagnostics say, why would I ever get an MRI? This is such a better experience. Or to your point after surgery, it's just totally a different experience for the patient. Great thoughts. Gentlemen, thank you once again for joining us today. Thanks, Chris. For more information on the Nanoscope technology, contact your local Arthrex representative. You can also visit and register at arthrex.com to learn more about how the Nanoscope can be used to help you treat your patients better.